kind friends all gathered round. There's something I would say. That what brings us together here has blessed us all today. Love has made a circle that holds us all inside. We're strangers, are as family, and loneliness can't hide. You must give yourself to love if love is what you're after. Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter and. Give yourself to love. Give yourself I'm to going love. to be talking about emotional sound techniques. That's a system that I developed for healing and the other people and their work that have led up to it. First of all, emotional freedom techniques is what it is based on. So emotional sound techniques is a hybrid of emotional freedom techniques. Emotional freedom techniques is based on the premise that all negative emotion is a blockage in the energy field. In traditional Chinese medicine, the premise is that all illness is an imbalance in the meridian system. So what we're really talking about here is acupressure for the emotions. Ancient man was treating himself with some form of acupuncture as far back as the ice man. There have actually been needle marks found in the first man 6,000 years ago. The first system that is formed in the fetus that we can tell now is the meridian system. Chinese medicine has only been acknowledged in the United States for 30 years, but we now know that it is the most important system, the meridian system, in the body, the first thing formed. Here in the United States, we have been using acupuncture for the emotions for almost 30 years. Now, with YouTube and the internet, you can go to any one of these sites, Emotional Freedom Techniques, my website, Love in Action, or even you can Google Emotional Freedom Techniques or go to YouTube and just put in EFT and there's at least 2,000 little videos, less than two minutes, that will show you how to tap on the acupuncture points for the emotions. In 2001, Dr. Fuller Royal, of the Nevada Clinic here in Nevada treated me with emotional freedom techniques. What I didn't know then, but he did, was that I was seriously ill and that I was actually dying. He could tell this from a heart rate va variability test, which he also validated with a vol machine. He was able to tell by holding a rod in my hand that measured all the meridians that every system in my body was shutting down. He used emotional freedom techniques and instantly I was healed. I found this almost miraculous but I knew that he had used a treatment to perform it. So I spent my life researching this technique and why it worked so fast and so wonderful. There is a magic delete button that we all have on our body where we can delete a subconscious program. It's on the side of, a, of the hand. It's called the psychological reversal point. But when I use a crystal and I say something like, I deeply and completely accept myself, even if I don't want to get better, which is the program that I had, it deletes that subconscious program instantly and alters every cell in the body. Obviously, if I didn't want to get better, I would not have gone to the Nevada Clinic in hopes that Dr. Royal would be able to save my life. I was really excited about these techniques because not only did they save my life, but I was able to use them with my son. My son John was born under extremely traumatic circumstances and in effect it destroyed his nervous system. These techniques helped him a great deal. When he became a teenager, he actually funded my research further into these fields to include sound. Even our most private thoughts affect the vibration of our body. After my son's death in 2005, all of my digital cameras began to capture energy, emotion, 
and other dimensions, especially when I was working in the healing room. It was as though he was continuing to help me from the other side of the veil. At first, everyone thought my cameras were broken, but soon it became obvious that John was teaching me from a much higher place. Affirmations alone work only with the conscious mind. 90% of our reactions come from our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind stores programs and beliefs accumulated without our consent, somewhat like computers. The great news is that you can override and delete these unwanted programs. There is a magic key to the subconscious and we all have it. It is the psychological reversal point on the side of either hand. Quartz is frozen light and acts like a laser. Crystals have the highest molecular orderliness found in nature and when used in conjunction with the tuning forks it amplifies and coerces the frequencies making it ideally suited for healing. Everything living is created from light and sound. They are building blocks of all matter. Sound and light communicate instantly within the cells of the body. Sound and light travels on parallel wavelengths 40 octaves apart. Sound precedes light. The word became flesh. Vibrations become form. There is a direct relationship between emotion, sound, color, and health. For instance, there is a specific number of vibration for each note. Each note correlates to a color and the progression of colors in the chakra system it mirrors musical scales and the rainbow. All of this has to do with the laws of octaves, the symbol of infinity and the realms of quantum physics. 2007, John encouraged me to run the sound of the tuning forks through a rose quartz crystal as I placed it on the body. He also encouraged me to use the quartz crystal on the psychological reversal point. Combining emotional freedom techniques with tuning forks and crystals has accelerated the healing power that we all have within us to the highest level that I have yet to see. Many things in my photos have validated to me that we hold the lower vibrations of trauma, sadness, anger, grief, and guilt in our cellular makeup. I have also been able to photograph the fact that we hold within us subconscious programs that actually conflict with our conscious desire. Finding our core issues and speaking the truth about them can heal them instantly. Most importantly, when we're touching or tapping on a psychological reversal point. We each hold the keys to our health and our emotional freedom in our own hands. When we bring ourselves to a place of balance and peace within, we begin to bring that peace and harmony to the world. This is my favorite photo because it shows the full range of color of emotions. Yellow, which is fear, red, which is anger, and blue, sadness. She is tapping on the end point of the conception vessel under her nose. I believe this spot relates to feelings of not deserving. This is a major part of our lifelong purpose of learning to love ourselves. In this photo, Gary Craig, founder of Emotional Freedom Techniques, is tapping on a woman who had been upset for days. The anger, the murky red stream, is literally gushing out of her physical body, forcefully flying through her auric field. By the end of her session, she expresses her feelings of calmness. Reprogramming a subconscious belief is the most important thing you can do to change your life. Reprogramming is what saved my life and brought instant healing to my body. The conflict seen spiraling above in her aura is the result of a major rewiring of the subconscious to agree with her conscious mind. This took less than one minute to accomplish. This is the same woman as in the previous photo. 
The peace between her conscious and subconscious mind was setting in. Often, after a reprogramming, I can see a joyful alignment of all four bodies, the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. This woman was not feeling joy when she began, but clearly joy has been achieved by the end of the session. This is Dr. Fuller Royal working in my healing room with tuning forks. I believe this woman reached a major breakthrough at the moment this photo was taken. Notice how she's rising above herself. Normally an EFT session begins with a psychological reversal point. This one has not yet been introduced to you, but it is called the sore spot or the chest spot. It is easy to see the enormous amount of, of negative emotions being released as he rubs the sore spot. He was able to delete some negative subconscious programs as well as the stuffed emotions attached to it. When this woman used a quartz crystal on the psychological reversal point on the side of her hand, there was a quick release of emotions as she returned to a state of peace. These photos are very common with the use of a pointed crystal or laser on the magic delete button. The phrase she was saying was, even if I will lose my identity if I get over this anger, I deeply and completely accept myself. In this photo, you quickly see the relationship of color and sound coming from the ukulele. This is a photo of my son's ukulele that he took with him wherever he went. He was always able to calm himself down when he played it. The vibration of the strings on the end of his fingers were like a portable tranquilizer. I like to think if these colors were analyzed, it would be a beautiful song from heaven. Although sound was also used in this session, the woman was releasing issues from her past by tapping on the brow spot. She was depressed and could not get over the death of her boyfriend, which of course was my son. Huge amounts of trauma accompanied this depression. Hi, welcome to the DVD version of Emotional Sound Techniques. It is a companion to the free workbook which is downloadable on EmotionalSoundTechniques.com. It's important to have both, so we'll go one step at a time. And to start out with, we're going to do collarbone breathing. The reason that we're going to do this is you're going to be doing a lot of these procedures on yourself, and in order for them to work, I want to be 100% sure that you are not polarity reversed. So what we're going to do is begin with hand placement. So you're going to put your thumb inside your palm and place the palm on your K27 point directly under the collarbone on one side. Then what you're going to be doing is tapping directly between the two knuckles, the, the pinky and ring finger, with all of your fingers. So you're just going to begin tapping there and now we'll begin the first of the eight breathing exercises. They're all the same, but we have eight different points. And this is how you do it. You take a deep breath and hold. You exhale half a breath and hold. Exhale forcefully and completely and hold. Inhale half a breath and hold. And then breathe normally. That's one of eight. Now we move to the opposite side, touching partially on the bone and partially under the bone. And again, tapping in the spot between the two knuckles with all your fingers. Take a deep breath and hold. Exhale half a breath and hold. Exhale completely and hold. Inhale half a breath. Breathe normally. Very good. Now you're going to make a fist and keep the thumb inside, putting your fist on and under the collarbone. You don't have to be very specific, just as long as you're in the general area. Remember, again, to, be, to keep tapping. Take a deep breath and hold. Exhale half a breath and hold. Exhale completely and hold. 
Inhale, half a breath and hold. Now breathe normally. Moving to the other side, take a deep breath and hold. Exhale, half a breath and hold. Exhale completely. Inhale, half a breath. Breathe normally. Very good. Now we're simply going to reverse hands. So now you're going to be putting the thumb in the palm of your left hand, crossing over to the right collarbone. Take a deep breath and hold while tapping. Exhale, half a breath and hold. Exhale completely and hold. Inhale, half a breath. Now breathe normally. Very good. Three more to go. Move to the other side. Take a deep breath and hold. Exhale, half a breath and hold. Exhale completely and hold. Inhale, half a breath. Breathe normally. Very good. Only two more to go. Make a fist. Keep your thumb inside. Put it in the general area of your right collarbone. Take a deep breath and hold. Exhale, half a breath. Exhale completely. Inhale, half a breath. Breathe normally. Very good. Now we're on the last leg. Move it over. Take a deep breath and hold. Exhale, half a breath and hold. Exhale completely and hold. Inhale, half a breath. And breathe normally. That is the end of the collarbone breathing treatment. Hi again. Before we move to the entire classroom version of this DVD, I would like to go over very specifically the tapping points that we'll be using. First and foremost is the top of the head, the governing vessel 20. We're going to be tapping or later on using tuning forks and crystals right on the top of your head. You can use one hand or both and you don't have to worry about hitting the point specifically. Just as long as you're tapping on the top of your head will be fine. Then, the end point of the brow, right here, you can do both. You can even do all your spots around the eye, called the claw, at the same time. Or you can just kind of slap your forehead very lightly. So it would be the brow spot, side of the eyes, and under the eyes. Whatever works best for you. Also, what we're going to do after those spots are do under the nose, which is a very important part of the governing vessel. The end point of the governing vessel, under the lip, the beginning point of the conception vessel, and then the collarbone points, which are directly underneath the bone itself, and we call that the K27, end point of the kidney meridian. Another very important point for tapping is under the arm. This is the end of the spleen meridian, and it also has some other very important intersecting meridians. So you can tap either or both. Then what we'll go to are the fingers. And what you're really doing is tapping on the very bottom of the nail, the side of each, and you can almost feel a very sensitive point there. But even if you're just in the vicinity, you're going to be activating that particular meridian. So you go from the thumb, to the index finger, to the middle finger. You can do the ring finger or skip it. It really is up to you. And then a very important point is the pinky. This is the heart meridian. Now, those are the basic tapping points. But what we need to know is we also have a psychological reversal point. We have one over here, which I call the magic delete button. It's the small intestine three. You can tap like this, you can slap it like this, and what I love to do with children is I put both my fists together and that's when they sing a song. The main psychological reversal point, which we'll explain a little bit later, is right over here. You place your hand as though you're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then you rub in a circle, in a large circle, clockwise, because somewhere in there 
is either a sore spot or even your thoracic duct. And we aren't even positive as to why this works so well. But by putting your hand in this spot, rubbing clockwise, it's the main psychological reversal point on the body. It will also work, especially if you are not right-handed on the left side, but what we have found is that this is the most effective point on the body. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. Before we go to the class, I just want to make sure that you have a good understanding of the crystal and the tuning fork, how to use them, place them, and activate them, because the class goes rather quickly. This is the crystal that I will be using to run the sound of the tuning fork through. So first, in order to get a tuning fork to make noise and to vibrate, you have to activate it. So what I have here is a very common activator, but you could also use a hockey puck, you could use a book, a paperback book, you could use the bottom of your heel, you could actually, in a pinch, even use the bone on your hand, but we're talking about in a pinch because you don't want to damage yourself in any way. So I will be using the activator. And what you do is you hold the fork on the stem. If you touch this part of the fork, it will dampen or stop the vibration. Now if your hand happens to touch this part, which is called the throat, it won't stop the vibration. So that's okay. So when you activate the fork, you basically hit the activator and then you listen and you hear a beautiful vibration. That's how you know you're ready to place it on the body. It, the vibration will last about 30 seconds, so you can actually place it on the points directly on your body like this. A wonderful place to place it is on the top of your head, governing vessel 20, because you're basically sending the own sound through your whole body. It's called meeting of 100 points. So therefore, at least 100 points on your body are getting activated. When you're going to use the tuning fork and a crystal together, which allows for light to go into the body and activate light within the cells of your body, you actually place the crystal first and then the activated fork on top of it, just like that. You can tell the vibration and the sound goes so much deeper, further, into the body, and it has a chain reaction that is almost unbelievable. We actually have things in our cells that carry light, so when you're putting the sound through the crystal, you're activating light within your body, within the cells of your body, and that's a good thing. Thank you. Okay, so you can just move your chair right here. Oh. And you guys are all going to be tapping yourself. Now, you can either tap yourself. That has a, a electrical energy. It creates a circuit. You can tap on someone else, which creates a healing uh, exchange between two people. You can imagine that you're tapping, which actually has the same effect, if not better, and uh, you can use sound, and you can even use, believe it or not, sound waves that can go through your home, through your stereo, and not even know it's happening. It's just amazing how we can treat our meridian points. So I'm going to ask you to take off your glasses. Okay. And you know what, maybe I should have face you forward. Okay. okay. So the way this works is you think of an issue, and you say, I have to remember EFT, okay, even if, okay, you, you, oh, first thing you do is you create a morphic field around you. Now, the, what I mean by a morphic field is you think of an issue, and the minute you do that, you're creating an energetic field around you that is, I can actually photograph it, it's amazing. 
But if you don't create that energetic field, you will not be doing anything when you tap. You'll actually be opening up and activating healing, but not about the issue that you're not thinking about. Mm -hmm. So the only way you're going to get the issue you want dealt with is by thinking about it. And I also need you to activate the feeling body. We have an emotional body and a mental body. So what you do is you think about the issue, like when you were told to stand in the back of the room when you were in second grade, and then you feel it. You're engaging two bodies. Okay, so don't do it yet. I'm just going to, to demonstrate. So at that point, you would use a psychological reversal point. I'm going to use the side of the hand because there's two on the body. One is rubbing the thoracic duct over here, and one is tapping the side of your hand. I'm going to use tapping the side of the hand. So you would tap the side of your hand and you would say, even with this anger towards my mother, I deeply and completely accept myself. And you only need to think it. You don't actually have to say it. And three times you would say, and tapping on either hand, everything is by uh, on both sides of the body except this one spot here is only on one side. So you're going to tap and say, even with this blank, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then you would tap on the brow spot, which is right over here. Doing it on someone you love actually gives a completely different energy because you're accentuating the process of giving and receiving love. The same electrical charge coming out of your fingers is not the same as coming out of someone else's. So there's never a wrong way to do it. It's just a different way. The tapping on the brow spot would be the first step. Then the side of the eye, right over here. And then under the eye. A lot of people shorten it and just tap around the whole eye, calling it the claw. So they're getting everything tapped at once. The next place we're going to move is under the nose. Very important point because this is the end point of the governing vessel, the most important vessel in the body. Then you tap under the lip, which is the beginning of the conception vessel, another very important vessel that runs down the front of your body. The next place you're going to tap is there is a hollow right underneath your collarbone called the K27 point. Incredibly important point in your body. Kidney meridian begins in your foot, ends right here, and is a vital, vital part of your energetic system. So even if you just tap there and then your thymus gland every day, you've activated your T cell production, you've increased immunity in your body. It's just amazing what tapping your body can do. So that would be under the collarbone. So there we are there. Now under our arms, I'm going to have you lift up your arms like honey. Okay. Under your arms like that, one at a time or just one of them, is the end point of the spleen meridian which is the entire um, I'm sorry uh, immune system is governed by the spleen system also there's interactions cross sections of other meridians so this is a really important point under your arm and you can feel it if you feel around with your thumb you can actually feel a real real uh, yeah <laughs> real sensitive point there and if, even if you just want to get your energy up, that's a great place to tap. There's also another point, and they call it BN on the sheet. It stands for beneath the nipple. But this is a neurolymphatic point. If you're draining, if you're drained and you need a lot of energy, just slap right under there and it's going to lift you right up. Okay? So then we're going to hit all the fingers. And you're going to do that. It's the side of the nail. Okay, just like that, right over there, hitting the side of the nail. And what you're doing is you're tapping the beginning of each meridian point. So you're pretty much waking it up. You're going along the whole hand. Most people will skip the ring finger, but just keep. No reason to skip it. Then you get to the pinky. This is the anger point. This is connected to the heart meridian. And it is so powerful that if you see someone who's had a heart attack and nothing will revive him or if you happen to notice 
on a, in a hospital, there's never a crash cart around when the person has a heart attack, even if you're in the hospital. You could bite them here, not that you'd have the courage to do that, and revive them. Because I'll tell you what, I was told by the head of the cardi cardiology unit in UMC that half the people that die there is because there's no crash cart available. So at, in a cardiac care ward, so you want to be careful, you want to know these. This is a trick that can save the life of someone you love in an instant. Just, <laughs> I mean, what are you going to, they've already had their heart attack and they're cold. Just bite them. You'll wake them back up again. This is where we process our anger, okay? Very important spot on the body, okay? All right, so that's the first part. Regina, does it matter which side you do it on? Uh, on which, yes, it does matter. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it on the inside, the inside of the side of the okay. mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to be. The, it's the part that's closest to your heart. Okay. Okay. So it's the inside. Now, if you don't remember, tap both sides. No harm in that. <laughs> no harm in that. You can't over tap, <coughs> and you you can't do this wrong, which is what's so amazing. The intention that you have is 90% of it. The 10% is getting it right. So don't worry about getting something wrong. Even the imagination that you're tapping is going to make a world of difference. And believe me, I have photographed this. I have had people lay there, not used sound, not used tapping, and have <coughs> them make believe they're doing the session. It is fantastic, unbelievable. Okay, so now you've done what's called the sequence. And this EFT or thought field therapy has three parts to it, like an Oreo cookie. You do a sequence, you do a bridge, and you do a sequence. So now comes the middle part that I'm going to teach you. Now the reason they, they used this, and they, a lot of people have stopped using it. I have to tell you, what I'm teaching you is what they did at year one, 25 years ago. They've come a long way since then, but it's still important for you to know it because these tools are as valuable today as they were then. The sandwich, this part they call the nine gamut, is that what it says on their nine gamut? This is yes. what I'm going to, nine gamut procedure. The reason they use this is because they incorporate the right and the left side of the brain. When you get the right and left side of the brain working simultaneously, you're operating at an optimum. Okay, so this is how that part works. There's a spot right here on your hand. I'm going to have you uh, do it, okay. And you tap right over here. If you're doing it with someone, you want to use all of your fingers because you want to make sure you're getting, all your, you're getting the right spot. There's no point in knowing where it is. It changes on everybody. It'll move a little up and a little down. So just use all your fingers and tap. Now while you're tapping, you actually have the person open their eyes, or you open your eyes, keep your head straight, you look down to, without moving your head, you look down to the right, then you look down to the left, and then you make a circle 365 degrees with your eyes, and then you reverse it. Then you hum happy birthday. <laughs> Then you count to five. Now we're switching to the logical side of the brain. Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And then hum happy birthday. Okay, so here's what we did. I'm going to show you what happens. When I ask you to follow this with your eyes, I want you to do that for me. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but... She didn't go all the way to the edge, okay? I'm actually carrying her there. We automatically will miss the spot that we're holding that energy in. One of the reasons why it's very good to do this with someone is so that you can guide them through the circular movement of the eyes. This is called EMDR. It's a highly recognized therapy in um, natural psychology. And you see how what we do when we're doing that ourselves, we skip right over the part of the brain that possibly we're holding something. I think looking in a mirror would help. 
You can't do that while you're looking in the mirror. <laughs> so you might want to ask someone to work with you to be sure. <clears throat> However, I can tell you it works even if you don't get it all the way because of the intention. I was just showing you the specifics of how body energy works. Okay? We would like to, if we have the possibility, to work with someone <clears throat> and make sure that that circle is complete and make sure it's complete on the reverse. You're scan literally scanning the brain. Okay, so the humming has to do with the creative part of us, the musician in us, and the counting has to do with the CPA in us. So we're engaging the left and the right side of the brain. So now that we've done that, while we're thinking of the problem, the whole time we're thinking of the issue, we're keeping it in the morphic field. And when we start, we want to rate the intensity of it from 1 to 10. So now that we're doing this, you've done the sequence, you've done your 9 gamut procedure, you do this tapping sequence all over again. So it's like the other side of the Oreo. So again, you're going to tap on the brow spot. So tap with me, don't even worry about whether you are thinking yet, because we're really not doing it together. You're tapping on the outside of the eye, you're tapping under the eye, under the nose, under the lip, under the collarbones in the hollow, under your arm, under your arm, beneath the nipple over here, and then each of the pinkies, uh, each of the end tips of your hand, fingers, How many until times you get to the about seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, it has been tested that if you do it nine times, they think it actually works more. You know, I mean, there's so much. Both hands? Uh, I, you know what, I'm one of these Catholics that always went overboard on everything. So I always go back and forth, both hands. I don't want to take any chances. I still use the old method in my healing room. I do a two and a half hour session and I do it all. I leave no stone unturned. Um, I, I think if we're going to heal, we might as well put everything into it. Um, I was one of those kids that never ate meat on Friday, even when it wasn't Lent. You know, uh, or even, you know, I mean, just, to me it was just, over, it was an overdue. I always want to do an overkill, and I still do that. And I think it's important to learn. So at this point, you would check the intensity of that emotion from 1 to 10. So you would try to get it up as high as you could with, um, you know, when you engaged the morphic field and the energy system, and then, of course, you brought your feeling part into it. After you went through the procedure, you're going to check the intensity. Well, hmm, is my, are my feelings still hurt because of what happened yesterday? You know, did I release any of this? <coughs> and you'll notice that it probably did drop. Maybe you got to a 9 and it probably went to a 3, okay? So we use a completely different um, thing at that point where we simply would tap and we would say something like, even if I'm addicted to the vibration of hurt feelings or even if I'm addicted to the feeling of being a victim or we would say, um, the last thing I always say is even if I'm still stuck at a three or whatever number I'm stuck at and that one usually gets everybody right down to the one. So I'll, I'll go over just a few of them with you. Uh, there are about 20 what they call global reversals. They try and really, really hit different um, subconscious programs that almost all of us have. You know, not being enough, not being safe, uh, not being worthy of being loved. Being addicted to a vibration is huge. Uh, believing it's not possible to get over this hurt or this wound or this anger. So I will um, do that after the fact, okay? And then we'll try and get everybody down to a zero, and we'll see how it worked for everybody. Is everybody ready to really go for the, the thing here? Okay. So um, do you want to do it yourself, or would you like me to tap you? Uh, I'd probably be better if you tap me so I don't okay. do it in the wrong order. Yeah, and this way you guys can look at where I'm tapping, and I'll verbalize it the whole time. So I'm going to take about 30 seconds for you all to focus on whatever it is you want to work with, and I can guarantee you within the last two weeks something major has come up in your life. 
So you, you may want to use that or you may want to use something slightly less uh, traumatic. Virginia? Mm-hmm. Are you just focusing on emotion right now? Could be physical? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for asking that. I know that um, we have some physical ailments going on here in the room. It works just as well, if not better. It works very well for breathing, sinus, pain, mobility. Um, you, there's nothing it doesn't work on. I, absolutely nothing. Once our basic needs are met, which is the fact that we have a roof over our head and we're safe. Everything else is emotional. And so our physical ailments very often are coming from an emotional root. So it doesn't matter whether you start on the physical ailment, <coughs> because most of us don't know the emotional root of our physical ailment. I would have, would, didn't have a clue for about a year after I saw Dr. Royal what the emotional root of what I was healed from just by the tapping, just by saying even if I don't want to get better. It took me a year to actually figure that out. I'm a slow learner. So um, you can start at either end. Work on the pain or work on the emotional root. doesn't matter. And uh, any other questions before we start? Because that was a great question. Thank you. We're ready to roll? Everybody know what we're, we're working on? Okay, and we're creating the morphic field, right? Okay. You can think or say this. I, I prefer you say it because that's an extra energy involved. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. You're going to be tapping the side of your hand. We call it the karate chop. Okay. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay. We're tapping now on the brow spot, the end of the eyebrow. And like I said, go ahead and do both. And now the side of the eye, just between seven and ten times. And you want to make sure you're getting electrical action there, so give yourself a tap. You know, you don't want black and blue marks. Under the eye, end point of the stomach meridian. Under the nose. You can exaggerate your breaths a little bit at this point, thinking only of the issue. Try and stay focused. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, under the collarbones. Okay, under the arm. A good slap. Okay, beneath the nipple. I'm going to get right here. Okay, now we're starting on the thumb, thinking only of the problem. Even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Working your way through the fingers, even with this problem, even with this problem. And now to the pinky, even with this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. And now we're going to be tapping on the gamut spot. So that's use all your fingers. And what you're tapping is between the pinky and the ring finger, down your, your hand, on the back of your hand. Give it some nice taps. And then open your eyes. And with your eyes only, not moving your head, make a circle. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going to open your eyes. And you're going to make the circle. Everybody make that circle. As slowly and as deliberately as you can. Thinking only of the problem. And now hum happy birthday. Keep tapping. Okay, count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Hum happy birthday. Okay, again, brow spot. You're doing the sequence, thinking only of the problem. Brow spot side of the eye, under the eye, 
under the nose, under the lip, under the collarbones, again under the arm, beneath the nipple, now the fingers, starting with the thumb, take some slightly exaggerated breaths, tapping all the fingers, ending now on the pinky. Okay, did anyone not get any relief at all? Or can't you tell? You don't know, I can't tell. Who said that? Okay, sometimes it, it happens so quickly and it's gone that you think nothing, actually nothing happened, which is what I thought. I thought absolutely nothing happened. But what you'll notice is that it's gone anyway. And you'll think, oh, well, it was because I was doing this, I was tapping, whatever. But what I'm going to ask you now to do is to tap in emotionally and try and check the intensity again of that issue, even if it's gone, and see where you're at. And try and come up with a number <coughs> between 10 and 1. And does everybody still have something left of that? And I'm talking about a charge. You feel the charge of the hurt feeling or the anger. Everybody still have a charge of some sort left? Yeah, I'm looking at a lot of heads. Okay, great. At this point, you still should. Okay, so now what I'm going to ask you to do is to tap on the side of your hand, and I call this the magic delete button. Matter which hand. Doesn't matter which hand. The only spot on the body that's side specific is the thoracic duct, and that's when you're rubbing over here. But I didn't even teach that, so everything that you know, both sides of the body are equal. Okay, so you're tapping on, and you can alternate. And so now focus on the problem. I'm going to have you do it to yourself right now. Do the karate chop. Focus on your problem and repeat after me while you're focusing on it. Even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, even if I, will not allow myself to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem. Even with all of my faults and limitations, even with all my faults and limitations, I choose to get over this. I choose to get over this. Even with all of my faults and limitations, even with all my faults and limitations, I choose to get over this. I choose to get over this. Even with all of my faults and limitations, even with all of my faults and limitations, I choose to get over this. I choose to get over this. Even if I'm secretly addicted to the vibration of this problem, even if I'm secretly addicted to the vibration of this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I forgive myself on all levels, on all levels. Conscious, and unconscious. conscious and unconscious, even if it is not possible to get over this. Even if it is not possible to get over I forgive myself on all levels, on all levels. conscious and unconscious, even if it is not possible to get over this. I forgive myself on all levels. And I conscious and unconscious, even if it is not possible to get over this. Anybody not at a zero at this point with the as you check in, okay? Okay. Let's assume you're not and go along with me on this. Just say, even if I'm stuck here, I deeply and completely accept myself. To karate chopping. Even if, I'm stuck here, even if I'm stuck here, and you might want to say the number, like even if I'm stuck at a two, even if I'm stuck at a one, even if I'm stuck at a four, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I'm stuck, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I'm stuck, even if I'm stuck, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, has everybody at least felt a significant reduction in the problem? Everybody? 
No, nothing at all? Not one drop? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to deal with that a little bit separate. Okay, but you felt absolutely nothing. No, I'm just Okay. All right. Um, that's unusual, but if I was working with you one on one, obviously a therapist is trained in, okay, now what do we do? <laughs> but I'm not going to go into that at this moment simply because time does not allow for that. And I don't want to get off the track. Okay. There are other things like lasers that we can use, crystals and sound, which we're going to be learning. Do I have any questions about what we just did at this point? If it's not in the right order, if I forget. It no, it does, absolutely doesn't matter. What, what we learned from all of the years is as long as you're tapping, you're opening up that particular meridian. Now originally, it was okay if it was flying, you had to go from this point to this point to this point. Now I have to tell you, I have those maps and I have those protocols and I will use them if I run into a block. So for instance, there's a really long one for grief. Well, if I am working with someone who just lost a child, you can be sure I'm going to be pulling out the protocol. And I always ask through kinesiology, and they will send me to that protocol. So it isn't as though they were useless, but um, they're more specific. It gets to the point where things get narrowed and narrowed and narrowed down. Anger, being the simplest of all, was always only three spots. Here, here, and the pinky. Now panic, <coughs> anxiety, you can simplify to tapping under your eye. And I'll tell you just a little, little story about that. My son, who was tied down at birth, and he didn't know he was blindfolded and tied down at birth for 12 days. And he had to have his knee operated on. He's 16, big guy, big Italian guy. And he's ready to go into the operating room and he has an IV in both arms. And all of a sudden, he goes insane. Rips the IVs out, blood squirting everywhere. And he's having a panic attack like I've never seen in my entire life pulling the hair out of his head, screaming. David thought he was going to run out of the hospital, right? And the ho they're holding him down and putting ice on him. I sneak in there, uh, no easy task, cause by now there's like eight people at the, around him, and I just tapped under the eye like that. Maybe 10 seconds later, <coughs> he was like, Mom, I'm okay. I'm okay. <coughs> I'd never seen a panic attack like that. And it wasn't until after he died and I started doing research on birth trauma <coughs> that that cell memory never left him, even though he never knew it happened. I forgot it happened. So um, we hold these things within us, and a simple tap under the eye can stop a panic attack just like that. It doesn't matter which eye, right? It doesn't matter because the body has these points on both <coughs> sides. Now, we sometimes will become more out of balance on the right side. Like, my one, one side is completely out of off balance. <coughs> the other side is strong. The other side is weak. That tends to happen to people. One side will become the, the dominant side and one the weak side. And especially if you're a healer, you usually spend most of your life out of balance trying to to rebalance because of what you do. So uh, we basically, those in the healing profession, end up being more cockeyed than most. I used to have my aura picture taken in the morning by Father Joseph when I would arrive at the St. Therese Center, and it would be blue and white and clear, <coughs> and at the end of the day, it would be black mm -hmm. and heavy. So we, we do take on a lot of things. I have since learned how to, you know, to, to deal with that a lot better. I, in the beginning, I would have I would throw up at three o'clock in the morning with a migraine headache, but you know you learn how to how to clear yourself and how to protect yourself as you do this. So uh, everybody except one felt relief. Yeah. Quick question: mm -hmm. If someone is in a panic attack, would, would they have enough conscious to go? Oh, I don't understand. Absolutely not, because <laughs> when you're dumb. deep in it, the yeah. last thing you think of is to treat yourself. Right. So it's good to know for someone else. Even myself, when even no matter how uh, much training I've had, when I'm deep in my own stuff, the last thing I'm going to do is tap. 
the last thing I'm going to do is have it. I've gotten a little bit better through the years and since I've written about it, but I can remember when the worst things would strike, but it would take me three days to say, why the hell didn't I tap on that? Mm -hmm. You know, I would just do what everybody else does, suffer through. Because the ego, the part of us that loves to suffer, it literally holds on to stuff. It holds on to being the victim. It secretly loves victim perpetrator scenarios. It's its food. So the last thing you're going to think of if you're deep in something is to do it. So that's why it's good to know these things. And I love it when I can work with a whole family because <coughs> they're always like, Mom, I think you need to tap. Mm -hmm. And so the, the kids remind the moms and the moms remind the dads and then it becomes a family affair. And it works out a lot better than that. And I can remember my son saying, Mom, I think it's time that you tap. You know? <laughs> so it's good to have family members that love us enough and that we love enough when they say something like that. I mean, we count on our significant other to be able to point out when we're really behaving, you know, when we're acting in our martyr or our victim in that place that, you know, they love us anyway. So. Have you ever done this with a child that's having a temper tantrum? Yes, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And it works really well. Um, and you'll see it takes about 45 seconds. But what I would do, and you know, so I have three grandchildren, I would reach over and I would simply start rubbing and say, I love you, Sammy, even if you're still mad at me. I love you, Sammy, even if you're mad because you can't have that toy. I love you, Sammy, even if you're crying. And it's amazing how quickly this works. I, I am always amazed, even though I do it on a daily basis, I'm always amazed. And my grandson was born, and I could take their aura pictures at birth, which is so cool, with a lot of um, <laughs> energy. His dad, who actually was my foreman running the flooring company for years, we would send him in as the Incredible Hulk to let all the other trades know, like three days ahead of time, that the flooring guys were coming. If you've ever been in a casino three days before the carpet's going down, you would think there's no way on earth this can happen because you have to literally move all of those people off the floor to start prepping the floor, keeping them off of it, gluing the pad down, laying it out, and then getting carpet straight, which you probably have no idea how difficult that could be when you don't have walls that are straight and you're going 500 feet with carpet that comes off the, the roll like this because it doesn't come off straight. They're allowed to be an inch off. Well, time an inch, time's an inch, time's every roll, and you've got to really cook. It's a difficult task. My son-in-law would be the guy that would go in there and literally scare the other trades to death. And he's a little <laughs> guy. And the owner of the Mandalay Bay would pay me to have him there screaming for three days ahead of time. You guys better get this. So you can imagine what my little grandson was like. I mean, he got all of this stuff. And I was able to work with him in such a way that he was so able to process that. I, they're so, my grandchildren are so well behaved, I'm absolutely amazed. Absolutely amazed and astounded because I never said no to my kids, spoiled them rotten, but I have the most well behaved grandchildren. I can't even believe they're mine. And I use those tools to help them through. I've, I've used it for everything. I mean, my poor grandchildren have had to grow up, you know, tuning forking themselves and, <laughs> and they love it they absolutely love it so um, we only had one that didn't work believe me I would so love to take you in the other room and get you going on this and maybe we would have some alone time later so the next thing that we would do at this point is we would put in the new program if you got it down to a zero always take the time to put in a new program there's two ways to do it and I'm going to show you the more complicated way. Uh, the simple way would be simply to imagine the opposite. So let's suppose it was um, you were pissed off. Okay. So you would simply tap in on only four points. I am peace. I am peace. I am peace. I am peace. That's the simple way. Okay. And it really just sets everything in there. There's four spots, simple, eyebrow, under the nose, under the lip, and middle finger. 
they're kind of easy to remember because nose and lip are governing and conception vessel. This is an easy finger to remember, guys. And then, of course, the eye. So it's only four spots for the re reprogramming. I am peace, I am peace, I am peace, I am peace. Of course, you could use I am love, I am vital energy, I am abundant in all areas of my life, I am worthy of love and affection. There's absolutely all the good stuff you can tap in. Now, there's a much more complicated version of this. And um, it takes four minutes. So I can't decide if I'm going to do this now or later. <coughs> and the reason I can't decide is I want to see how many people intend to stay to 3 o'clock and how many have to leave early. You guys are leaving early, is that correct? Okay, so um, I'm going to do the complicated version and I'm going to close you guys up. This is an important thing if you're wide open for you to close yourself back up again. So I'm going to do the closing up now rather than after the next one, just in case you leave and we haven't gotten to where I need to close you back up again. So what is happening with this next thing that I'm going to show you is you're literally rewiring the subconscious mind. It takes two minutes on, on either side of the brain because your right side and your left side of the brain have a different relationship with your subconscious mind. And the way this is done is you pick your new program. So <coughs> you really want to pick your, your I am and make it nice and simple, like I am, love and, I am infinite love and gratitude, or I am peace, or I am powerful, I am healthy, I am perfection protecting itself. So just pick your, your affirmation, and we'll do the reprogramming now. Okay, you have your affirmation, so you want to cross one ankle over the other. It does not matter which one you, d you use. And then you take the <coughs> opposite hand and you, touch your, you cross over and touch your palms together. Everybody got that? Okay, good. So now you really have your brain working. When you start to say this affirmation, a lot of thoughts will come in from your ego that will argue with it, okay? So you cross over, and now there's a breathing part that goes with this, and you inhale through the nose, and when you do that, there's a spot in the roof of your mouth behind your teeth and you can feel it with your tongue. There's a ridge right there. And so you allow your tongue to touch the roof of your mouth as you inhale, like this. Then you exhale through your mouth. Inhale through the nose. Let your tongue touch the roof of your mouth. When you exhale, that's when you say your affirmation. So it goes somewhat like this. I am love. I am that. Inhale through the nose. I am love. I am that. Inhale through the nose. I am love. I am that. And <coughs> the reason you use your voice is because the breath holds the same crystallization that your blood and your bones have. We are all crystalline beings. And when you exhale, the vibration of your voice, along with the crystals in your breath, bring into you the vibration of that which you are saying and reorganizing your subconscious mind to believing. Okay, so everybody have your um, affirmation? We're ready to roll. Inhale through the nose. I am. I am.
Okay. Now we reverse the feet and reverse the hands using the same affirmation. Inhale through the nose. <coughs> I am love. I am that. I am love. your body settling so firmly in at the end that you know it's solidified. It takes about two minutes, very rarely more than three, to get your subconscious completely rewired. been such an intense month of light coming in that the dark places within us were definitely uh, had light shined on them. So I assure you I have treated myself more in this month of July so far than probably in the last two years, well and probably in the last year. Now of course after the death of my son I have to treat myself quite a bit. But um, you know you would think that when you're constantly treating yourself you'd get you'd get there, but well, we don't get there. There's more stuff and we're always going deeper and always learning more and more. You want to put that laser, by the way, where your shoulder's hurting. Only you, you want to use the red. Okay. Kitty, the other button is the red and I'm going to have him just put it where it hurts. <laughs> you can leave it where it hurts on your shoulder for about a minute and it's amazing. Okay. So yes, you want to keep treating keep treating, keep treating, even though it seems like it's the same thing. And that's on the BSFS? Yeah, that's on everything. Or I do the, everything else, I wasn't sure about the BSFS. You really can't do this too much. The only thing you can overdose on is that lazy the laser that she's using right now. And um, I was going to start a whole new modality called Tap the Crap. Because, you know, <laughs> you can just continue and you're, it's, it's just wonderful. You'll get to the point where you'll even think about doing <coughs> like I deeply and completely accept myself or even if and it'll start working because the body becomes so used to you it just kind of re just like <coughs> lets it go. <coughs> For about a year I actually had to um, treat when I was would see the policeman behind me. I was so afraid of that that I would get off the freeway. I would turn right or left. I had such a phobia of being arrested that it, and for something I've never done, I mean I've never even committed a crime that I would either admit to or speak about, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I was always afraid of being arrested and now I only think about doing that. I, I mean I wouldn't even have to touch the spot and already I'm like, oh okay fine. So now they could drive beside me and behind me and I'm I'm okay. I I might just still look out of the rearview mirror to see if there's a cop around now and then, but I'm it it takes a while, but you'll get to the root of most of your problems. We won't we won't get to them all until we're ready to cross over. So there's always going to be something that we're working on. Okay, so everybody. Got You can look up everything you want to know about it by going to Dr. Larry Nim's website, www.besetfreefast.com. Many questions that you will have about this will be answered on that website. But what you need to know now is that we're basically installing a program into your subconscious that will allow and instruct your subconscious to treat the emotional roots and belief systems that are causing any discomfort that you might be having. 
What do I mean by discomfort? Well, it could be a pain in your back, it could be a pain in your neck, or it could be an emotion that's triggered by something. Like you could feel suddenly very overwhelmed with sadness, or anger, or fear, or worse, blame, and jealousy, and feeling betrayed. So the parts to this are very, very simple. Once you become aware that you're not feeling good, you notice it, you intend to treat the discomfort. You simply use what's called a cue. A cue is the signal to the subconscious. And what we're going to do for this class is simply touch our heart. There are several reasons for that. And you can change your cue at any time and add more cues. But the cue for now would be touching your heart. So this is how it would work. You would notice a discomfort, intend to treat, take a deep breath, and touch your heart and say, I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive myself, anger itself, stoppers. And if it's a pain that's very intense, just do it very quickly over and over and over again until the pain goes away, like this. I forgive myself, anger itself, stoppers. I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive myself, anger itself, stoppers. I have never had to do that more than five times in a row for the pain to actually decrease. And if you get migraine headaches and you do this when you notice that you could possibly be getting one, it will cut it off at the pass. Now, I also recommend that when you're done installing this, that you test it out not only right away, but after you leave the DVD or the class so that you can see how beneficial it is and that you make little sheets of paper that have those notes on them. The notes would say, notice discomfort, intend to treat, forgive everyone and everything, use your cue, forgive myself, use your cue, anger itself, use your cue and stoppers. I put them on little tiny labels and I put them all over so I remind myself to treat. The first person that I ever taught this to cured herself of a very severe stage of MS and debilitating chronic migraines. So if you don't use this a hundred times a day, you're not using it enough because it only takes 10 seconds to do. So we'll go back to the class right now and get comfortable and we're going to install this program into your subconscious. Thank you. your cue? Okay. So we're going to be speaking and giving some important commands to our subconscious mind. Kitty, I know you've done this already, so you don't actually have to, but it, I don't think it hurts to do it over and over again. Okay. Repeat after me. These instructions are for you, my subconscious mind. These instructions are for you, my subconscious mind. Whenever I use my cue, whenever I use my cue, which is, which is, use your cue. Everybody use your cue. You will eliminate, you will eliminate all of the emotional roots and belief systems, all of the emotional roots and belief systems that are controlling the problem or issue. That are controlling the problem or issue that I have noticed and that I intend for you to treat. You will include in each treatment everything in me or about me that has established, accepted, and or maintained this problem from the beginning of my existence, from the beginning of my existence right up to this present moment from this time forward from this time forward you will automatically you will automatically treat everything that may ever occur in my experience in my experience that would or could that would or could cause me to take this problem back again and I thank you for your faithful help in this way. 
for your faithful help in this way. In every treatment, in every treatment that I ever do, that I ever do for any specific problem or issue. For any specific problem or issue. I am treating all my problems. I am treating all my problems in my mind, in my mind, emotions, emotions, body or spirit, body or spirit that cause me to have any negative experience. That cause me to have any negative experience. To be imbalanced in any of my energy systems. To be imbalanced in any of my energy systems. Or to be limited in any way. Or to be limited in any way. Whether the focus of the treatment is alive. Whether the focus of the treatment is alive, present or absent, present present or absent. each treatment, each each treatment, treatment is, for is for every related contributing problem in my entire existence, in my entire existence, right up to the moment of treatment, right up to the moment of treatment. Each time I use my cue for a problem. Each time I use my cue for a problem or issue that I have noticed, or issue that I have noticed subconscious, subconscious, you will do all four, you will do all four of the following treatments, of the following treatments in one sequence. In one sequence. Number one. Number one. You are treating everything. You are treating everything that I am experiencing, that I am experiencing about or toward the problem. About or issue, or issue, including people, including people, events, events situations, situations, and circumstances. And circumstances. Number two, you are treating everything that I am or have ever experienced <coughs> as an effect of this problem or issue. Number three, you are treating everything that has ever contributed to setting up or maintaining this problem. Or, or, issue or issue in my experience. In in my experience. experience. And number four, and number four you, are treating all you are treating all of the accumulated mental, accumulated emotional, 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 physical, physical and, spiritual and spiritual post-traumatic stresses. Post-traumatic stress that I have ever experienced from the problem or issue being triggered in my existence. Now I'm just going to read the next few things you're going to pe- uh, come along with me in your mind. Each treatment will include every thought, emotion, attitude, belief, imagination, fantasy, and all related problems that are or were involved in or contributed to the problems or issues that I am noticing and cueing you to treat. You will do all four of these treatments combined and in rapid sequence each time that I notice a problem and I use one of my cues. This applies to any additional new cues that I ever instruct you to use. During the closing sequence, when I think or say, say this with me, forgive everyone and everything. Forgive everyone and everything. And use my cue. And and use my my cue. You will eliminate all of the unforgiveness that I experience toward everyone and everything involved in any of the problems that I treated during my session. Likewise, when I say the word stoppers, say the word stoppers Stoppers. and use my cue, you will treat all of the stoppers involved in my treatment session, including any stoppers not on the list. I am now going to read the stoppers to you. These are the things that you might have in a belief system or your subconscious that would stop these things from working. I am afraid that these treatments won't work for me. I am afraid that these treatments won't last. I doubt that they will work. I doubt that they will last. I don't trust myself to do things effectively in these new ways. I doubt that I will do things effectively in these new ways. I doubt my ability to live out these changes in my life. I am vulnerable to taking back one or more of these problems I have just treated. I have one or more other problems 
that would directly or indirectly stop me from maintaining my treatment gains. Also, when I think or say the words anger at myself, say the words anger at myself, anger, anger at myself, or mad at myself, or mad at myself, and I use my cue, and I, and I use my cue, you will eliminate all anger. You will eliminate all anger, judgment, judgment, judgment criticism, criticism, and any related problems, and any related problems that, I have directed toward myself that I have directed towards myself throughout my session. Throughout my session. And when I say or think, and when I say or think forgive myself, forgive myself and, use and use any of my cues, you will eliminate all unforgiveness you will eliminate all unforgiveness toward myself, toward myself that is involved in all of the problems that, is involved in all the problems that were just treated in this session. That were just treated in this session. From and I'll, I'll just read this now. From now on, whenever I use my cue for each of these four closing sequence treatments, you will do each treatment thoroughly and completely. This is very important. <coughs> also, if I have not treated for any of the closing sequence steps in any previous treatment session, then you will include treatment for them as I do the closing sequence in the current session. So that means if you used your cue and you only said forgive everyone and everything and forgot to say forgive myself, mad at self and stoppers, but you remembered to do that later on in the day, it would go back in time and it would actually treat for those things. Now you're actually finished, except for there's something called fail-safe. Only 15% of the population have these fail-safe problems. And what they, they are, it's a list of 12, 11 sentences. I only have to read them once to you. And even though maybe two people in the room may need this, it doesn't hurt that you hear them and then we've covered it all. So these are the fail-safe sequences. I want to be free of this problem. I am willing to be free of this problem. I am willing to be free of this problem permanently from now on. This is a big one for some people. I give myself permission to be free of this problem from now on. It's okay for me to be completely free of this problem from now on. Another big one. I deserve to be permanently free of this problem from now on. Really big one. I am willing to receive all of the possible benefits of being free of this problem. I will do everything necessary to ensure that I am free and remain continually free of this problem from now on. There are still one or more problems that will make me keep or take this back. There is still something in me that will make me keep or take this problem back. And last but not least, I am vulnerable to taking this problem back sometime and you are all fully programmed. So before we have lunch, we're just going to test it, and then we can eat. So <coughs> test it by thinking of a, something that you would consider a discomfort. So it could be physical, could be emotional, could be old, new, family-related, sibling-related, relationship-related, work-related, abundance-related, it doesn't matter. So everybody think of your problem and then we're going to go through the closing sequence steps. Okay, now intend to treat and use your cue. Say I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Mad at self. Mad at self. Anger at self. Anger at self. And stoppers. Now, sometimes if you only imagined a problem and you went through this and you're in a class, you don't think it worked. So I encourage you to practice so that you will know how powerful this is. And then keep these in a place where you'll remember so that you know you can do it. If you get more upset in the car or near your phone or at your desk, you know these little pieces of paper will go a long way. And you have now received direct access to the hard drive that literally runs the show. Everybody ready for lunch? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scope of this video does not include basic emotional freedom techniques. 
However, it is included in the video. So you can go to emofree.com or there are at least a thousand YouTubes, maybe two thousand YouTubes, that give the basics of EFT. So this is emotional sound techniques, which is a wraparound of emotional freedom techniques, including the own tuning fork and a rose quartz crystal. It doesn't necessarily have to be in this shape. It could be any shape that sound would go through. So I'm just going to start. Susan, I'm going to ask you at this time to just think of anything that's bothering you in no particular order whatsoever. And during that time, I'm going to be running sound through a tuning fork on the basic EFT points. I'll be adding two points, which is the governing vessel, 20, and also the liver, 3, on both feet. But other than that, all of these points will be the basic EFT points. So I'm just going to ask you to ramble in your head about everything that's bothering you. Don't say it out loud. It doesn't matter whether it's issues of family origin or abundance or relationship issues or health issues. Just go right on rambling. The last four spots that I do will be anger-related or frustration-related, and I'll remind you of that. Okay? okay. All right, so let me know when you're ready to just ramble in your head. Okay. Okay? And you can put your head back if you want, so you can kind of really get into this. But don't relax. I want you to let your ego have its way. No, your head can relax, but your mind needs to be active. Your ego needs to have its way with you. Okay. Allow yourself to be the victim and allow yourself to be betrayed and all those things the, the ego good. loves. Okay. Exactly. I'm going to keep my head up so I don't okay. relax too much. All right. That's fine. And if you change your mind, you can relax. I mean, put your head back. <laughs> the photographs that I am inserting into this DVD allow me to capture energy and light, emotion, and other things. It is a gift from my son. You can notice the first moment that I touch her head with the tuning fork and the crystal on the governing vessel, there is an enormous amount of light going through her body and an enormous amount of light even going through my body, the therapist. Activating the fork is an important part of the protocol. You want to make sure that you can get a nice vibration going and that the connection from the skin to the crystal and the fork onto the crystal is clear. So you want to make sure there's a vibration getting through to the client. And you can tell that through your own fingers. Susan, are you feeling the vibration? Yes. Okay. You also want to make sure the client doesn't relax during this. You want them to be thinking of the things that normally bother them. You allow the vibration to continue until it stops on its own. 
And if you do not get at least 15 seconds from a vibration, you need to do that point a second time. Those were the points on the face, top of head, eyebrow, side of eye, under eye, under nose, and under lip. Those are the end point of the governing and beginning of the conception vessel. Now we're going to go to the kidney 27 point, which is directly under the collarbone. the most important points in EFT is under the arm. It's, a, it's the, I believe it's the end point of the spleen meridian. Of course, I hope it is now that I said it, but if it's not, it's still an incredibly important point. So if you do not get a good vibration on this point, it's important to go back and do it a second time. hold these types of crystals either flat or long ways depending on how you're guided when you put the sound through. few people have a problem rambling at this point. It's almost as though the crystal and the fork force issues to the surface in a way that um, even tapping doesn't do. Allowing the ego to have control here, not the therapist and not the client, um, is a great way to get what needs to be processed looked at. And now I'm doing the fingers. So I'm placing the crystal on the side of the nail, anchoring it with my other hand, and then placing the fork, activated fork, on top of it, allowing that to run through the, the entire meridian. We're basically infusing the body with light, making sure there are no blockages in the meridian. This pretty much allows for all the emotions to flow freely out of the body. The concept that I like is that we're turning the faucets on in the house and allowing the water to run, except now we're opening up the, the emotional valves and allowing them to basically spew. <laughs> We're on the middle finger now and we're going to skip to the baby finger. Because we'll be coming back at the gamut spot to to get that other meridian. Susan, the next four spots are about anger, so if you want to think about things that frustrate you. This would be a good time. You can even finish the sentence, well, what frustrates me the most is blank.
takes a little practice anchoring the finger, the side of the nail, the rose quartz, and the tuning fork, but it's just like anything else. Once you are used to handling the tuning fork and the crystal, it goes a lot smoother. It definitely takes practice, though, to get the, the sound through. What we are looking at in this photograph is the yellow coming out of the client. Yellow is the color of fear and sometimes even obsessional thinking. Notice also how much light is coming out of her feet, which are actually covered with a black sheet. Enormous amounts of light are being run through the meridians via the tuning fork. Now the leather three spot on the foot is normally not used in EFT, but it's between the big toe and the, and the next toe, about one inch up on the foot. It could be more like two inches depending on the size of the person. Susan's very small. But if you lay the crystal in that general area, you're going to hit the liver three spot. And this will re remove a lot of what is held in the liver. Very often I do this spot twice especially if I feel there's something intense happening. It's not necessary to do it directly on the skin. The sound and the vibration is so powerful that it'll actually go through the socks. And you can pretty much feel with your finger where the, to place the crystal. I'm just going to finish it off using the other baby finger, the other pinky. And at this time, I'm going to ask the client to basically narrow it down to one thing that could be called the broken record that's constantly going off in the back of their mind, or one issue or emotional, emotional problem that they would have and ask them if they can name it and if they know what it is. Susan, do you, can you pretty much narrow down one thing at this point? But yes. Notice in this picture the incredible blue light surrounding both the client and myself. Just imagine how much assistance we're getting from the other side of the veil that we're totally unaware of when we're receiving and giving energy sessions to one another. It's one of the greatest gifts that we'll never be fully aware of. Now that Susan knows the one particular issue that she would like to work with more extensively, I will begin a basic EFT protocol. I will also be using the tuning forks, the tuning fork and the crystal on the first psychological reversal point. So I'm going to go and ask you, Susan, to get the intensity of that emotion, that feeling, and those thoughts uh, pretty much as high as you can get it at this time. Okay. Okay. Can you give me a number between 1 and 10 where you think that might be? A 10 being the highest. It's pretty high. It's pretty high. And yeah. Can you give the emotion a name? Um... Disappointment? Okay, that's great. Okay, so that's all we need to know at this point is that we're dealing with the we're dealing with disappointment. Notice as I place the tuning fork and the crystal on the psychological reversal point or the source spot, again, how much light we are receiving from the other side of the veil. 
You can also notice the intense emotion that appears to be coming out of one side of Susan and also being run through me. It's an incredible healing modality, one that has yet to become known among uh, the medical profession, but you can see in these photos just how much assistance we are getting from the energetic realms. Can you repeat after me? Even with all of this disappointment, even with all of this disappointment, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even with all of this disappointment, even with all of this disappointment, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even with all of this disappointment, even with all of this disappointment, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. I'm going to switch this up a bit from the basic EFT, and I know most of the practitioners already have uh, the way that they do it, so I'm going to just implement what I do, but the basic would be just fine. Susan, I want you to repeat after me. I am healing all the sorrow. I am healing all the sorrow. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. I am healing all the trauma. I am healing all the trauma. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. I am healing all the trauma. I am healing all the trauma. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. I am healing all the fear. I am healing all the fear. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. In the deepest cause of this disappointment. I am healing all the fear. I am healing all the fear. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. In the deepest cause of this disappointment. I am healing all the fear. I am healing all the fear. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. In the deepest cause of this disappointment. Notice in this picture the enormous amount of yellow, which is the color of fear, just as we finished the fear spot. You might also notice the enormous amount of light that is coming th from Susan's body. And if you look to the left, you can see almost a black figure, which I would refer to as the pain body, literally being removed by the blue and white light. I'm healing all the anger. I'm healing all the anger. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. I am healing all the anger. I'm healing all the anger. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. In the deepest cause of this disappointment. I have healed all the anger. I have healed all the anger. In all the roots. In all the roots. And the deepest cause of this disappointment. In the deepest cause of this disappointment. Now I'm putting the tuning fork and the crystal on the gamut spot, and we're going to do the bridge, or the gamut, nine gamut spot, they can call it that as well. Um, now open your eyes, with your eyes only, look down to the right, thinking of the problem, down to the left, thinking only of the problem, follow this with your eyes. We're making a complete circle, and we're watching that each part of the brain is being scanned. Now hum happy birthday. <laughs> Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Hum happy birthday. <laughs> okay, at this point, what is the intensity of that emotion? It's lower. I don't know. I, I'm really bad with gauging that. That's okay. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle? Just about when we finished, you could see how Susan's higher self and my higher self are evident in the photograph. You can also see white light surrounding the both of us. Um, maybe lower middle. Lower middle, okay. okay. Now I'm going to ask you to make a fist like this, and I'm going to have you place the crystal on the psychological reversal point which is exactly where the point is in your hand. Okay, so I'm going to have you do that. And just put that right in there. And I'm going to read some psychological reversal statements. 
global reversals, okay? And rather than figure out which ones by muscle testing, I'm just going to go through the whole list, okay? I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. With all my problems and challenges. With all my problems and challenges. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even with all of my problems and challenges. Even with all my problems and challenges. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I never get over this problem. Even if I never get over this problem. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I never get over this problem. Even if I never get over this problem. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I secretly want to keep this disappointment. Even if I secretly want to keep this disappointment. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I secretly want to keep this disappointment. Even if I secretly want to keep this disappointment. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I am addicted to the vibration of this disappointment. Even if I'm addicted to the vibration of this disappointment. Being addicted to a vibration or to an emotion is actually an extremely common thing. This shows the emotion of fear, what she was addicted to, and the obsessional thinking related to that fear in the photograph. We are using a crystal on the psychological reversal point, a quartz crystal, a pointed quartz crystal on the psychological reversal point on the hand. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I'm addicted to the vibration of this disappointment. Even if I'm addicted to the vibration of this disappointment. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I will lose my identity if I get over this problem. Even if I lose my identity if I get over this problem. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I will lose my identity if I get over this problem. Even if I lose my identity if I get over this problem. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if I will lose my identity. Even if I will lose my identity. If I get over this problem. If I get over this problem. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if it is not possible for me to get over this problem. Even if it is isn't possible for me to get over this problem. I for, I I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if it is not possible for me to get over this problem. Even if it is not possible for me to get over this problem. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. On all levels. On all levels. Conscious and unconscious. Conscious and unconscious. Even if it isn't possible for me to get over this problem. Even if it is impossible for me to get over this problem. When a belief system is being challenged in the subconscious, you can see that the lines of energy are going in two different directions. It is a huge possibility that many people believe that they cannot get rid of their problem, addiction, or fear. So that is what is happening in this photograph. A belief system of possibilities is being broken. Now I'm going to ask you, Susan, to put the point under your nose and say, even if I don't deserve to get over this problem, even if I don't deserve to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I don't deserve to get over this problem, even if I don't deserve to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I don't deserve to get over this. problem. Problem. Even if I don't deserve to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, now we can go back to the point on the hand. Okay. 
Even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, even if I will not allow myself to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if it will not be good for me to get over this problem, even if it will not be good for me to get over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I have a unique block to getting over this problem, even if I have a unique block to getting over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Finishing up with the words unique block is a very good way to encompass enormous belief systems that we are not aware of maybe in the subconscious. You can notice to the right of the photograph how much negative emotion is literally being pushed out of the body by the light that is coming in from the left side of the picture. Even if I have a unique block to getting over this problem, even if I have a unique block to getting over this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Susan, can you tell me where you're at as far as the intensity of this issue? It's lower. It's, it's low. Like three-ish. Still a three? Three. Yeah. Okay. Even if it, I'm still at a three, mm -hmm. that's oh. a. Um, even if I'm still at a three. On this issue, on this issue, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I'm still at a three, even if I'm still at a three, on this issue, on this issue, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I will not do what is necessary, even if I won't do what is necessary to get over this issue, to get over this issue, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I will not do what is necessary, even if I won't do what is necessary. To get over this problem. To get over this problem. This disappointment. This disappointment. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. What's what's the level of intensity right now? Uh, it's 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 lower. Two, okay. Two -ish. Okay. So um, what we're going to do now, even though it's not at a one, mm -hmm. we're going to do a reprogramming. Okay. Okay. So what you need to come up with, assuming that you've just deleted the programs that are associated with and the emotions that are associated with this disappointment, what would be a new program that you would want to embed or install if you were a computer, which we operate very much like, um, something like, I am filled with joy, I am at peace with all that is going on in my life, I am love incarnate, I am infinite love and gratitude for every gift that I have. I am the gift. I am love. Or simply, I am that I am. But you need to choose as a conscious being mm -hmm. a new program beginning with the words I am and finishing it with what you would choose to be the program that would run you. Okay. Now, regarding this particular issue? It, it could be related yeah. to it. Okay. Or it could be a brand new program that you just would like to install in the computer of your subconscious. Oh, so it doesn't have to be related to the no. other issue? Mm -mm. It could just be the new program that will run you rather than the old one. Okay. So we've deleted disappointment. You can put in anything. You could put in I am joy, I am peace, I am love incarnate, I am infinite love and gratitude. You don't need to relate it to what we just dealt with. Okay. And you don't need the crystal at this point. Um, but I am open to the universe and to all of all it holds. Okay. I am open. I open because that's my problems. I tend to close up. Okay. I am open. Open to receive? Open to receive. Ha all the abundance of the universe. How's that? Right. I am open to receive. I am open to receive. All of the abund abundance of the universe. Does that feel right to you? Well, abundance meaning not, I mean, not just money. Money, money. is abundance and is money, right. abundance is a feeling. Yeah. Well, all the universe has to offer as far as love, joy, He's opening up. Okay, open so up when you're open. saying that, you're thinking love and joy. Okay, yes. fabulous. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do 
is to ask if you ever remember having that feeling that you were open to receive all of the abundance and the love and the joy. Do you ever remember having that feeling? Mm -hmm. Can you make believe you have that feeling? <laughs> for any length of time <laughs> or just a split moment? <laughs> Even for a split moment. Now I want you to cross one foot over the other. Now take the opposite hand. Once the hands are locked over in the opposite position that the ankles are, the person begins to think and feel the new and say in their minds the new belief system. Usually for the body and the mind and the soul to come in complete union with that it takes less than three minutes sometimes it only takes one minute I could tell with Susan within less than one minute that this side of the brain actually was in complete agreement with the fact that she was open to receive once Susan reversed the ankles and reversed the hands began saying the new belief system in her mind I could see that there was a lot of opposition. She was actually rewiring the other side of the brain until she came into complete agreement, body, mind, spirit, and subconscious, to the new program that she was installing. This is the kind of picture that I love to see at the end of a reprogram. This took Susan about two and a half minutes, but you can clearly see body and spirit, higher self, in total alignment with the belief system that she wanted to achieve. This is the basic protocol, and it didn't take more than a half an hour. I'm very pleased. This is a young man that I worked on the following day. And instead of using a crystal during the psychological reversal, I used laser. And in my opinion, having done hundreds of these sessions, I believe that the laser does the same or maybe even better than the crystal. I obviously can't tell because we're very early in studying energy. I wanted to show this picture because this young man came to me with the issues of anger. And I wanted you to see what the color of anger looked like. You can see clearly on the left side the color red. And this was his issue, anger. At this point he was doing the psychological reversal. Whenever we use any technique that deletes old emotions or programs, it's important to reprogram exactly the way I just showed you. However, it is of the utmost importance to do it if you've used tuning forks and crystals because what has happened is you've opened the person up so that they would be vulnerable for the next couple of days if you did not close them back up with a new program. So remember, never use the tuning forks and crystals without closing with the reprogramming. As I continue to work with energy to photograph the field of energy psychology, I will be updating my website, loveinactioninc.com. When we end a session or a class, even when we begin one, I like to clear the space energetically. And what I do that with is a crystal. I like to have a crystal that has a point on it. And I use a tuning fork. The one I'm using now, which you could use the, the vibration that you like, is the 963 hertz frequency from the Salvaggio scale. Salvaggio scale. 963 is the energy of love and manifestation. It's a wonderful frequency that I use. How I do that is I activate the fork, 
on the crystal. And then I run the sound through that crystal and I point it in the direction that I want to clear. In addition to the sound, I also send thoughts of unconditional love, which are vibrated and manifested through the crystal. Crystals are amplifiers not only of sound, but of intention and thought. So instead of there being nothing in there, what we call a vacuum really means just the absence of electric atoms and molecules. So there's something there that are not electric atoms and molecules. And that's what I'm calling the vacuum level of reality. So the next thing we did is we said, oh boy, let's just take the, what appears to be the source out of there. Let's take the water vessel and the Faraday cage, move it away, move it, you know, long way away and store it so that it's well shielded. And if this was normal reality, then these oscillations would just die away. Well, they don't die away. Not quickly, anyway. What we see here um, is a case uh, outside of the Faraday cage. Um, the amplitude spectrum, uh, the, 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 the profile, the spatial profile, okay, on two separate days. And you can see that it is slowly decaying, but the decay rate is remarkably slow. And then we found that if we put a natural quartz crystal with its C-axis pointing upwards in the region where the Faraday cage had been, then what we see is that these two, look at 23 and a little over 25. Now we see they're both uh, about 27, and they're closer together. So now the, here's the, the difference between September 28th and September 30, two days. The decay rate of this stuff is on the order of months, not seconds or microseconds as we're used to finding in our normal level of reality. And then we did another heretical experiment. We just, we looked at the wave oscillations, but we rotated the quartz crystal 90 degrees to the right so that it laid on one of its prism faces and it pointed along the line of those thermistors. This is what we saw. So the pre-quartz crystal is very little, looks very different, the wave from with the quartz vertically upright. It's just a little bit larger in amplitude. But you rotate it and immediately, what you see is an inversion of the wave shape. You see a decrease of the amplitude of the wave by maybe a factor of two to three, and an increase in the frequency of the wave by maybe something like three to five. Wow. It looks like maybe we found some kind of tuning mechanism for whatever is in this level we're calling physical vacuum. So if I just recount what I've walked you through. We think the instruments are accessing a magnetic monopole in order to get this DC magnetic field polarity effect. The temperature oscillations we think do not arise from anything in the air, the electric atom molecules of the air, but in the vacuum state of the room. And thus we, our working hypothesis is that magnetic monopoles exist at the vacuum level of physical reality. And so a conditioned space has an electromagnetic gauge symmetry state somewhere between the U1 state and the SU2 state. Probably has to be SU2 to yield these properties. And such a condition is that it's a higher thermodynamic free energy per unit volume. And so connecting any two spaces, one 
at an SU2 state level to one at a U1 state level, the upper, the higher one, the SU2, can drive any process in the U1. So I thought, well, if that's the case, is it possible that when we are born, that we either have a body organ or a body system that is at this higher gauge symmetry state? Because if it was, if, we, if that were the case, then it would say, hey, this is, this is really what is driving what we think of as the life force of the body. Uh, probably not totally, but it, but it says that you've got something that would drive all the processes of the physical body that we, uh, our present science thinks is relevant. And so we did studies on humans, um, and we used the kinesiological technique. We tested muscle strength. We used a world-class kinesiologist. Um, and so with various muscle groups, and we found first the average strength of the muscle, and then we would bring the south pole of a DC magnet close to the muscle group, and we found the arm was stronger, so the muscle was stronger with the south pole, and we turned it around, we're using a bar magnet for this, we turned it around with the north pole, it didn't even have to be touching the muscle, just in the near field, and the muscle was weaker. So what we had learned when we looked at humans was the DC magnetic field polarity effect existed there. Well, The proprioceptors in the muscles are connected to the acupuncture meridian system, which are connected to the chakra system. So our conclusion, our working hypothesis, is that the human acupuncture meridian chakra system is at this higher gauge symmetry level, and that is the level that is influenced by human intention, is influenced by human mind. It isn't the course level of physical reality, the electric atom molecule level. No, it is this magnetic information wave level that is in the physical vacuum. And basically all humans and perhaps all vertebrae have this, what I'll call a chi prana pump, okay, for sake of a better word. So things like meditation, yoga, qigong, sustained focused intention basically can allow 